Hey there, so we're going to go through uh, Modern Atomic Theory Worksheet number one right now. Um, the first little piece is just who did what. Uh, and that's pretty simple. John Dalton talked about the billiard ball. Uh, plum pudding model was Kelvin and Thompson. Nuclear model, where the nucleus is the thing, um, was uh, Rutherford and his gold foil. Bohr had them moving around like planets. And then Heisenberg, De Broglier, and a whole slew of scientists worked together on the wave or quantum mechanical model. Um, your homework was to do uh, some electron configurations, just in case you didn't know that. Um, right, and it looked like this. And we had this example, and I want to go over this example here before we delve into what the other answers are. Zoom in a little bit, trying to get that off the screen. Pretty close. So uh, here's a complete example. If you look at your periodic table and find sodium, uh, the configuration for sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. But w what does what does that mean? That means that the electrons, that's not what I meant to do, the 11 electrons for sodium start in the beginning, that's 2, and then there's 2 more, now that's 4, now there's 6 more, that's 10, now there's 3 more, that's 11, but the electrons build up in this order. Sometimes we even see energy diagrams, and we always start with the lowest energy, 1, 1, 2, to the next energy, 2, 2, 3, 4, etc. And we do this by following Aufbau's order. So on the back of your periodic table, you find Aufbau's order. And this is the order in which electrons always fill up around a nucleus. Um, this pattern is consistent. It's been uh, developed and tested and tested and tested. And they always fill up in the exact same pattern, which is on, like I said, the back of your periodic table. And the only way you're going to see the back of your periodic table is by flipping it over and looking. Um, and the way it works is you always start at the top, and you go down the arrow, and you go to the next one, go down that arrow, you go to the next one, go all the way through that arrow, go to the next one, and you add up the number of electrons you have until you've reached enough of these configurations. And I'm pretty sure you've had enough of these configurations if you've done your homework. Um, so sodium has 11 electrons, so we had to start off with the first two, then the next two, the next six, the next one. Two, two, six, wait a minute, that says two, 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 six, two. Well, the 3s could hold two electrons, but sodium only had one left, so we had to stop at 3s1. Quite often people do energy diagrams of the same thing, two electrons, two electrons, two, two, and two is six electrons, and then one electron makes the 11 that sodium has. So let's look at another one. Let's look at the one you're supposed to do after that. We have chlorine. Chlorine has 17 electrons, so it should be uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Again, we're just following Aufbau's order, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Once we get to this 3p6, we ran out of electrons and we stopped writing. 10, much bigger element. Man, look how long the configuration is. Uh, it starts off the same as all of them. Aufbau's order starts with 1s2. This starts with 1s2. Go to the next arrow, 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 2p6, 3s2. Next arrow, 3p6, and for the love of God, keep going down the arrow. Like, you start it on the arrow, slide down, 3p6, keep going, 3p6, 4s2 is what comes after the 3p6. Hey, what do I do after I finish this arrow? Go to the beginning of the next arrow. 3d10, 4p6, 5s2. End of the arrow, go to the next one. 3d10, 4, 5p6, 6s2. End of the arrow, go to the next one. Um, so for 10, which has 50 electrons, it ends up being a lot of energy levels. The first, the second, third, four, five. Energy levels 1 to 5 are being used for 10. Everything from the first to the fifth energy level. 
Um, there are even a couple of D sublevels being used in there, which is not exciting for most people. Here's lead and leads. Oh wait, this is not the energy diagram for lead. This is just lead. Sorry, I got excited. So this is just the configuration for lead. 1s2, 2s. It ends at uh, 5p2 because lead has 82 electrons. That's not lead. No, that's not lead at all. Who did that? Uh oh. That's not the right answer. We must edit the answer. Sorry, hoax. Um, so let's let's start with the 5p. Should have been 5p6, and then 6s2, and then 4f14, and then 5d10, and then 6p2. That's that's correct. Let's make this. So that that's how it's really supposed to end. <laughs> it's supposed to go for quite a while after that. Uh, that is an error. I think yeah, we we accidentally did the element right above lead, which is 10. Um, totally our fault. Totally our fault. Let's just go ahead blame blame the right person. Mr. Shangri-La. Okay. Um, for uh, the next question, write the electron configuration and draw the energy diagram for calcium. Calcium ends at 4s2. 2, 2, 4. 2 and 2 is 4. And 6 is 10. And 2 is 12. And 6 is 18. And 2 is 20. That corresponds to calcium. And that matches up with our off bows order. And then lastly, configuration for arsenic. Arsenic ends with 4p3. So a um, couple of interesting points here. Let's, let's pause for a second while I make a bunch of arrows appear and disappear. So this big drawing here is, again, it is called an orbital diagram and there's a couple of key things going on on here. Feel free to write all over your orbital diagram the next couple points. Um, we have energy levels. Those would be the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4. Those are the, the numbers you see. Let me even draw a line to one. So look. That's the first energy level. That's the second energy level. That's the third, or the third, or the third. So those coefficients in front, those are energy levels. We also have sublevels. Sublevels are S's, P, D, and F. Yes, we have a couple of those in here. Let's just see. Let's see, where's an S? Oh, there's an S, there's an S, there's an S. Where's a P? Right there, there, there. And then there's a D. Nope, no F, no F. Forget that. But there is a D right there. Um, now, these sublevels can be broken apart into orbitals, which is why this is called an orbital diagram. So it's called an orbital diagram. Well, cool. an orbital diagram. And let's just point out where all these orbitals are. So for the S, there's only one orbital. For the P's, each of the P's has three orbitals. And then for the D's, each one has five orbitals. So S's always have one orbital, P's always have three orbitals, and then D's always have five orbitals. And the easiest way to remember this is when you look at a configuration, it says S2, or it says P6, or it says D10, or it says F14. And you notice that these electrons are in pair, 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 pair. Divide that by two, one orbital. Divide that by three, divide that by two, three orbitals. Divide that by two, five orbitals. 
If you divide this uh, superscript in half, you can tell you how many orbitals each one. What the heck is an orbital? An orbital is a region we expect an electron to be hanging out in. Uh, when we did the notes, we had uh, a picture of orbital diagrams, but I don't think we got to watch the orbital video. So let me see if I can find that. So um, this is definitely one of my favorite videos out there. I will post a, a link to it. Um, so this is a representation of each of the orbitals. We have a s orbital. This would be the third energy level. Remember on the third energy level. Remember on the third energy level, which we're about to see, we have s's, p's, and d's. One s, one two three p's, one two three four five of the d's and. Uh, that's what this video is going to represent, is the shape of these spaces that we call orbitals. So here we go again. First we have the S orbital forming. Um, it is a big sphere-like structure. Uh, then after the S we would have P's forming around that. And here comes the first of the uh, P orbitals, and the second, and the third. We have one on each axis. The yellow one is one orbital, the red one is one orbital, the orange one is one orbital, and each of those can hold two electrons. So two electrons, two electrons, two electrons, that's a total of two and two and two. You're right, six. Um, so we have the S, the sphere, then we have these peanut shapes. Now let's get to the D orbitals, which are more complicated shapes. They're going to fit into these gaps between them. So here is going to be our first of the d orbitals. It is between the two axes on the x and the y. And we have our second of the d orbitals. It's between the x and the y. And then we have the third of the d orbitals between the z and the y. This one's on the x and the y. That is one shape. One math problem gone crazy. And the third math problem looks like it's got a cool little donut in the middle. So we have S's, P's, D's, D, 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 D. Put them all together, please. So first we have the S orbital. And we have the P orbitals. And fitting into those gaps, we have the five D orbitals. All five of those D orbitals fill all of those gaps. And now that every single gap is filled, there is no space for electrons. There's no more space for electrons. So, what if there were more electrons? We'd go to the next energy level, energy level. And the next energy level would fill up with a 4s and a 4p, and they would be similar shapes, but much larger. All right, let's shift back. Sorry, I just want to give this guy credit. If you, uh, if you Google search electron orbitals S, P, and D, you'll, uh, you'll pick up this video. The one thing that doesn't come across in, in my narration of it is you, you can't hear the music. The music's, I think, pretty good. Um, okay, so switching back. A orbital diagram represents those shapes without having to draw those shapes. The box, the box is a rudimentary version of those shapes. Man, is it really scaled down for ease. Um, we put two electrons in. Those are the two arrows. A couple of key things here. Uh, this arsenic atom, this arsenic atom ends with 4p3. So how do we handle the arrows there then? Um, we spread them out. Uh, there's a rule called Hun's rule from our notes. Hun's rule says that we have to spread out the electrons before they can double up. There's another rule in the notes. The Pauli exclusion principle. Um, the Pauli exclusion principle excludes the same spin. They have to have opposite spin as they move around within a nucleus. So, on an energy diagram or an orbital diagram, we show the energy levels 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. We show sub levels S, P, D, F. And we show orbitals with boxes, and then inside those orbital boxes, we throw the electrons. Uh, next page. Uh, the element solver has the configuration of this. What does superscript 6 tell us? It tells us the number of electrons that are inside that sublevel. What does the S represent? It tells us the type of sublevel. 
Uh, remember that each sublevel has a unique shape. The S's look like spheres. Those P's kind of look like peanuts. And we just saw the 5D orbital shapes, which are pretty weird shapes. I can't even give you a nickname for them. The coefficients, uh, the coefficients being the 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, those coefficients are the energy levels that the electrons are in. The Pauli exclusion principle is the idea that when we're doing these orbital diagrams, electrons must have opposite spin, opposite spin. They may not have same spin. Bad same spin. Bad. Nor can we put three in there. What, who, who did that? That's, you can't put three. There can only be two electrons inside an orbital, and they have to have opposite spin. So the Pauli exclusion principle refers to the number of electrons that can be not only be in an orbital, but they must be opposite in spin. Um, this one's really easy. Just do 2 plus 2 plus 2. You've got carbon. Or do this one. You've got aluminum. This is you've got silver. But another way, let me, let me pull up a periodic table here and uh, I'll show you something else. So, um, Another way to do it is just find their location. Uh, here is aluminum right here on the periodic table. This periodic table is marked by sublevel. First S, second S, third S, four S. Let me actually let me zoom in on that so you can really see what I'm talking about. You guys are like a mile away sometimes. Ooh, this will be a super zoom. Nope. Don't move the board. Scroll over there. There we go. So this probably doesn't look blurry at all. Um, yeah, so uh, this is a periodic table, but it's it's cut apart by sublevel of the elements that end with S, elements that end with D, elements that end with P, and you can see that a lot of them, the energy level just corresponds to which period it's in. First period, S, second period, third period, fourth period, fifth. The aluminum right there is one, two, three levels down. It's in the first column. So three levels down first column, 3P1. Three levels down, P area, first column. Three levels down, P area, first column. One, two, three, P area, first column, first group. Um, so, 4D9, 4D9, that would be five layers down, because the Ds are always off by one, and it's the ninth element over. So I'm pointing at it, and the element that would be 9 over in that zone is silver. And for carbon, carbon is right here. It is the second element and the second element in the P area. It's two layers down, two over. you got to start at the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. So the periodic table is actually organized by configurations, which is pretty easy to see once you see it, I guess. That sounds weird to say. And then we had more of the same. Um, we didn't draw the arrows in. We got lazy. 3P4, it'd be filled up. Up, up, up. So up, down, up, down. Up, up, up. Down, down, down. Up, down. When you get to 3P4, you do all the ups. One, two, three. And then come back and do the downs. For sodium, it'd be up, down, up, down. Up, up, up. Down, down, down and then the up. And then for silicon, it would be up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, up. And that feels unsatisfying because you put the two ups in there and then you just stopped. Well, you ran out of electrons. So you have an empty orbital, just like you might have an empty chair. It's just not being used. Um, there's definitely no downspin. We always spread, then pair, opposite directions. So we spread them out, you know, within the sublevel, then pair in a sublevel, and when we pair them, they must be opposite directions. So spread them out before you pair them up. Uh, what would be the electron for potassium ion is K plus 1. That means it's losing an electron. So here we have the normal potassium. And if it had to lose an electron, it's 
definitely going to lose that last one. The last one's the farthest from the nucleus. So you see that it doesn't have one here. And chlorine does the opposite. Chlorine becomes a negative one, which means it's going to fill this last space all the way up. It fills that last space all the way up. All right, folks, that's the end of worksheet one. You guys are going to watch the uh, video on the second half of the notes. It's all about periodic trends.